A young photographer and a boutique owner was arrested for murder in Ondo State in August of 2023 after his landlord found a suspicious red bag that appeared to contain a human head. Upon being confronted by the landlord, the young man revealed that the items in the bag was not exactly a human head but a human skull along with other fetish items. 26-year-old Franklin Akinyo Sui was immediately reported to the police by the landlord and was paraded when upon he made a confession as to why a human skull was found in his possession. According to the young entrepreneur, who happens to be a photographer and also owns a boutique, he claimed he had confided in his uncle the year before that his business was not going well, that he wasn't thriving and he needed help for success. And that was how his uncle directed him to an herbalist somewhere in Oshun State. And it was this herbalist that offered to fix the problem and drive customers to his business. But this wouldn't be done without a little ritual. Okay, so the herbalist asked me that what happened, why are we here? So I told the herbalist that my business is not going well and this is getting hard for me. So he now said, okay, that you do something for me. I said, okay, no problem. Uh, and I asked him, that, how much is, will you do it for me? So he now said, I should bring 200000 so when I go back to Ondo, so I, I transferred. First, the herbalist told him to pay a sum of 200,000 naira so that he would mix a concussion for him to drink. And in three weeks, Franklin was able to raise the money. He gave it to the herbalist and the herbalist in turn made the concussion and asked him to come to Oshun State to come and get it. After the herbalist collected the 200,000 naira, he was able to do the charms and concussion that Franklin was going to need to get his business going. Frankly, went to Oshun State to get the concussion from the herbalist. And part of the concussion included some diabolic fetish materials along with a human skull, in which Frankly asked the herbalist what he needed the human skull for. And the herbalist instructed him to use the human skull to bathe, maybe as a bailer or maybe as, you know, to bathe with it somehow. He was told to bathe with the human skull every Thursday by 1 a.m. And Franklin agreed. He went back home to Ondo State where he began performing the rituals. Every 1 a.m. on Thursday, he would wake up and bathe with the human skull. For a month, he did it. And he did not see any changes in his business. And this frustrated him. He called the herbalist, shouted, and told him that this is not working, that it's all fake, that he hasn't seen any changes in his business since he started doing this ritual. And he immediately demanded his money back because it wasn't working. At first, somewhere in his confession, he did claim he asked the herbalist to come to his house and collect the human skull and other fetish things. But apparently, the herbalist agreed to start paying him back his money. The herbalist agreed to start paying him back this 200,000 naira. But the herbalist had only sent 20k before this whole thing blew up in their faces. So Franklin's life returned to normal. He was done with the ritual. It wasn't working. The herbalist had agreed to start paying him back his money. It was now time for him to probably return the charms and wait for the herbalist to finish paying off the 200,000 naira bit by bit. Maybe that was what they agreed. However, on the 6th of August 2023, Franklin claimed that he planned on taking the fetish materials to Oshun State to return back to the native doctor. So on that day, he packed everything, the concussion, the um, human skull and the other calabash and other things that were needed for the ritual in a bag in a red bag supposedly or in a bag regardless and he was about to leave his house to return this to the native doctor when he forgot and left it in his backyard he had gone somewhere else hoping by the time he returns he would then go and return the the bag to the native doctor however when he left the bag in his backyard his landlord children playing around the compound stumbled upon it saw what was inside and quickly reported to their father it was the landlord that called the police, but before the police would arrive, Franklin had already arrived and that was when the landlord confronted him and Franklin was able to tell the landlord that it was a native doctor that gave it to him, that he did not kill anyone, that the human skull was not from his own side, that he was given this by a herbalist who was supposed to help him for his business and that he was even on his way to returning it. And that was how the police came. They picked up Franklin and he confessed to how everything started and how he got involved in this. 
and through his confession, the police were able to trace and arrest the Ebalis, who turns out to be a pastor by the name of Evangelist Oyegoke Dare. And when he was asked, Evangelist Oyegoke said that he did not kill anybody to get the human skull, that the human skull he provided for Franklin was given to him by another Ebalis named Sarafa. And that was how the police traced Sarafa and arrested Sarafa and asked Sarafa how he got this human skull because pretty much the human skull represents a human head and for them to have a human skull, a human head had been severed and cut out of their body, which means somebody had been killed. So this ritual case might lead to a bigger scale of murder because if a human skull is involved, then a human being is involved and a human being had been killed. And that was what the police were trying to do. They're trying to trace the origin of this human skull. And when Sarafa was asked how he got the human skull to give to the evangelist, Sarafa claimed that it was a vigilante from another community that provided the human skull for him. Sarafa named the vigilante to be a man called Ashekun, and Ashekun was traced by the police and arrested as well. It's not clear how Ashekun had explained getting the human skull. That information is not out. Is it possible someone else gave it to him? But him being a vigilante, I can imagine that he understood understands and knows the line of this dark black market of body parts being extorted. I mean, we saw this in the Ibadan forest of horror story where human part factory was discovered in Ibadan, where it is believed that people in the community knew what was going on. They had securities guiding that area who were most likely vigilantes. And for this story to boil down or for this channel of human part to lead up to a vigilante, it means that there's still a market for people's body parts. So how did this vigilante get the human skull? If proper investigation is done, we would find out that there is a chain of supply of human body parts. Did he go to a grave to dig up an already dead human being to get the human skull? Or did he kill someone and keep their body parts waiting for the day he would have to sell it? Because money was paid. This is the channel of how body parts are being trafficked. We've seen this also in another story that we did of a woman who killed her friend to sell her body parts for 50,000, 30,000, and 100,000 for the head. Which means there is a market out there. And we've talked about this multiple times. The rate of money ritual killing, especially in Ondo states and these areas, is extremely much. That if somebody needed a human head, all they needed to do was pick up a phone and call someone. Because somebody always knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who could provide a human head. Because when you look at the story now, Franklin got a human skull who was given to him by a pastor, who was given to him by an herbalist, who was given to him by a vigilante. And by the end of the day, you'll find that he's a young boy who killed his girlfriend and provided the head to this vigilante. We really need to look deep into this. I feel like the police need to do a deeper investigation because right now right here we were going somewhere with this line of where this human head came from we're heading somewhere the pastor has called the next person who gave in to him the herbalist has called the vigilante and now it has ended with the vigilante so where did the vigilante get the head from we don't know the information is not out there who provided this human head to this vigilante are there more human heads out there for him to provide to people is that his line of business is it what he does at night as a vigilante because a vigilante works at night so is it in the business of also capturing people at night and killing them and keeping their hair to sell you might be surprised what he's into because if this trace of possible murder case is ending right here with a vigilante then it means there's so much more that the police needs to uncover it's just unfortunate that we may not know this until another victim is killed i guess money ritual is a pandemic and this story has really revealed the fact that there is a chain of supply when it comes to human body parts and money ritual it's like a whole business and and the more it keeps getting exposed, the better these people hide it. The more secretive it becomes. The more contained it becomes. Because it won't stop. They will only get better at hiding it. So we're just going to wait for the next victim who will get killed. And their head will be supplied in a chain of demand and supply. Looking for somebody who wants to grow their business. Somebody who wants to, you know, become successful in his photography or boutique business. It's unfortunate. It's unclear what will happen to Franklin. Obviously, he didn't kill anyone and obviously he has uh, proved his case that this head was given to him by other people so he may not be taken in for murder but if the police would have to trace where the vigilante got the head from they might eventually find another whole world a whole tunnel of money ritual syndicates 
that kill people and provide their body parts for rituals. So you guys let me know what you think about the story. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Turn on notifications so should there be any future updates, you'll be the first to get notified. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to check out our channel for more videos like this and more stories and more documentaries that might interest you. Thank you guys for watching.